Welcome back, Hunters. I'm the Survival This, and we return to another weapon showcase from Monster Hunter World. We've covered the light bow guns, we've covered the bows. Now we're going to the heavy artillery. We're going to go through all of the heavy bow gun looks included in just base game Monster Hunter World. So let's hop over to our item box here and get started, shall we? Using my favorite light bow gun to start, but we'll start off. Nice and easy with the end of the line for the ore tree, basically, in the game. So this, I think, is the ore assault, is it called? Let's just quickly check. No, the chrome assault 3. There are two, sorry. 255 attack to start, two level 1 slots, three augmentation slots. And all the heavy bow guns, I will have the little shield as the only kind of custom mod on it, just to show off the full model of the weapon. Overall, it has a fairly decent amount of... Ammo will, you can load up into it. Normals 1, 2, 3. Pierces 1, 2, and 3. Spread only level 1. Stickies 1 and 2. And only level 2 with clusters. Does have slicing and wyvern capabilities. This is basically the end of line for one of the first heavy bow guns you'll pick up. And it's basically just a simple standard heavy bow gun that you're going to see is basically one of the ones that gets pieces put on and draped over it clothed. So with that little basic out of the way, let's move on to the next. So from the Chrome Assault, we go to the Destruction's Fusillade. Now, if you watched me hunt down the Basil, Basalgius, or whatever, however you want to pronounce the goose's name, you might have seen me use this big guy for it. And I have to say, this is one of the best looking heavy bow guns in the game. Because this is the Nergigante heavy bow gun. You can see the big heavy armor, or metal, just around the barrel. It is a brute of a weapon, and it just... It doesn't actually have any spikes to really give it the exact vibe of Nergigante that all of his other weapons use. But you do have a little bit of that darker black and orange ruby tinting to it. So you may be able to pick it up from the color of the textures. But overall, it is a very good looking heavy bow gun. I do like it quite a lot and I'm eager to see what the next levels are in Iceborne for it. Ooh, actually, before I do that, I gotta show you guys off the stats for it. So it has 285 attack to start, very nice and high. Uh, ignore the one slot that's in there right now, I don't even know what that is. Has a shield on, so you guys can see it. It is the Wyvern Heart for its special type, that's just that, basically, Gatling's fire style. For ammo, though, it is a little low in what you use for your normal raw shots, basically. Your normals, pierce spreads, you can see they are fairly limited in the amount you can load up into the weapon. Where it really does get more, though, is with the capacity. Four water, four freeze, two dragon. Overall, it's a bit of an odd bow gun, to be honest. Usually the heavies either specialize in a lot of ammo you can load in for one of the raws, or maybe an elemental. But this is a little odd for the Destruction's Fusillade. But either way, if you want to look and rock a heavy bow gun that just looks like a cannon, you basically have that one to aim for. Up next, we'll have the Water Cannon 3. Now, when I was doing the Teostra hunt, and I apologize for how long that video was, it was kind of a mix of showcasing what I wanted to get and what we did have. This is the end of the Geratidus line, basically. As you can see, it is, again, just that pretty simple metal base start with, the shield on front, nothing really ornate about that. As for the equipment, or the info on it, sorry, Water Cannon 3, attack is 255, does just have the shield, so you guys can see that added on. It does have a level 1 slot, for small minor decorations and three augmentation slots. This is where you're kind of going to see more of a traditional heavy bow gun loadout, because you have at least five shots you can load for normals one, two, pierce one, and two. It is a little low for level three, but that is your strongest normal shot. It does allow you a little bit of knockout capabilities with the sticky for level one and twos. Poison actually does have one and two for it, and it has a big capacity for water, just like its name suggests. So this is the end of the line for the Geratidus bow gun. Again, there's nothing that really differentiates it much from the end of the line of the regular ore weapon, or ore tree for the heavy bow gun. Nothing that really says it belongs to Geratidus, I'm afraid. But there are a few weapons that seem like every tree got something kind of like that for it. So next we'll go to the Armor Destroyer 3. And this is actually the Zitsi Yakuz. Or Zitsi... I think it's Zitsi or something like that. Well, this is his heavy bow gun, and as you can see, you get a little bit of how they decide to drape over the looks for it. So you have a little bit of the Zixi hide along the 
top of the frame there, and you have these little coverings on the shield, as well as on the bow limbs. Overall, though, you can clearly see the base underneath it, and it has those two little drums, I guess are a little extra ammo capacity, or just something like that for model looks. Overall, though, it's not a bad look, I just wish... When we get to the bone tree, you'll probably see a better way they should have approached the heavy bow guns for what they wanted to try to give for differentiating a little bit more. But we'll look at the equipment info here for it. So, the Armored Destroyer 3 and Zitsi's line gives you 255 attack to start with, a level 1 slot decoration slot. Low deviation, so the bullets might go a little bit left or right. We'll just fire a few shots so you can see. So far, actually, they don't really see it happening too easily, although there you might see a little bit down the line. As there is a little bit, it might sway left or right. As for the shot loadout, it's definitely a spread heavy bow gun. You can see it only loads normal 1 and 2 and pierce 1, but spreads you get level 6 to start with of normal, er, level 1, you get 6 of it for spreads. Level 2 you get 3, level 3 you get 3. Overall, it's probably not one you'll really be using that much. The heavy bow guns you want to look for the highest raw damage you can really get. Elemental isn't something you'll use as much on the heavies as the light bow guns because there's no rapid fire, but... You can still get a little bit of variety just to try to get that little bit of extra damage for the elemental weakness. And here we'll go into the Ligiana's heavy bow gun, which got one of the weapons that got a unique model for the heavy bow gun. And as you can see, it's a very nice looking model. Very nice and streamlined like Ligiana sort of is in flight. You can see the broad wings on the for the stock almost. The little shield covering is that kind of crest almost in front of our slinger there. Long slender barrel. It's basically a good rifle look for it, and nice little underbelly for Legiana there. This one is another Wyvern Heart, which I'm kind of surprised. I thought it would have been a Wyvern Snipe, but we'll show off one of those in time. So let's go into the equipment. This is the Legia, or the Le yeah, Legia Shatter Cyst. Almost said Lugia there. 255 to start, though level 1 decoration, 1 slot, 1 augmentation slot. And this is where you get a very good piercing heavy bow gun. As you can see, normal 1 and 2 are a little bit more base of the run of the mill, but there's where you really see the heavy bow gun get some high loading capacities. 10 shots of level 1 piercing to begin with, 8 shots of the level 2, and 6 of the level 3. Also has a alright capacity for the flaming and the freeze ammos. So if you do want to get a heavy bow gun that will give you a nice piercing amount of damage, you'll probably want to look at the Lady Shatter Sisters, or Shatter Crest, sorry, is one of your options. It's kind of hard to read sometimes. Anyway, we'll put that away and move on to another one. I think there's still a couple more in the ore tree. Yeah, this is actually a surprise to me. This is the Great Jagger's heavy bow gun, end of the line. And it actually is a unique model. This is one of the few Jag Great Jaggers weapons, I think, that might actually have a bit of a unique model to it. Because as you can see, it looks very similar to the ore base, but there are a few key differences. The stock, as you can see, is different. The, little, the bow limbs actually come out at a different angle. They're actually more like horizontal of a crossbow. And the shield is actually unique as well. I'm actually pretty surprised that the Great Jagger got its or the Great Jagger got itself a unique weapon look like this, and it, you only get it basically at the very end of the tree line for it. So let's just look at it. The Gluttonous Fang Cannon. It actually has a fairly good amount of attack to start with, 270. So even more than some of the other heavy bow guns we've shown so far. A level one slot and two augmentation slots. As for its loadout, it's probably. A little more lower capacity of what ammo types you can use, as you can see, normal 1 and 2 only, pierce 1 only. A high capacity for spread 1, though, at 10, and spread 2 at 6. It does give you a little bit of explosive capabilities with the stickies and the clusters. It doesn't have the wyvern and no elemental, though. So it's a bit of a heavy hitter, but it doesn't have a variety of ammo types to use with all the heavy hits that you want. It's probably a good spread bowgun if you want to go for one, but spread, I think, is probably maybe outdone by Pierce and some other things. Now, though, we're going to go into the Gnashing Flemenkennon. I think that's it. And with me dressed in the Anjanath high rank armor, this is a perfect chance to show off the Anjanath heavy bowgun. And this was another heavy bowgun that was lucky enough to get its own unique model. As you can see, the stock, the frame is basically just a gas barrel almost underneath, or a drum. 
Oh, excuse me. And that barrel is almost like an Anjanath's lower jaw, in a way. Just attached right underneath. That's what I love about the heavy bow guns. And even the shield is almost a welding mask strapped to the side. So, as you can see, it's a very unique model. I do love the look. When they decide to make the unique models, they really went all out with it. It's just a shame that we didn't get to see a little more of that creativity with others. But we'll go into a little more of the stats there. So the Nashing Flammenkolnen, or Cannon, or however you want to pronounce that, is a 300 attack to start. So it's one of your highest raw heavy bow guns. It does have a negative 20% affinity though, so that'll drop it off a bit. It's something that's not too hard to correct though, so you may want to look at just getting that affinity to zero or even positive for some really good output. A level 1 slot to start with, and two augmentation slots. This is a Wyvern Heart bow gun once again. Capacity, here's where you see the heavy bow guns start shining with their really nice ammo loadouts. Normal 1, 10 shots. Normal 2, 9 shots. Normal 3, 6 shots. Piercing, level 1 has 9, level 2 has 7. The spread, 9 for the start, 6 for the 2, 5 for the 3. It just has a very overall nice loadout, and it has a very high flaming capacity for its... Uh, very high flame shot capacity, sorry. At 7. So as you can see, if you want a good flaming heavy bowgun or a fire heavy bowgun, definitely look at getting the Anjanas full built Gnashing Flamin' Cannon. It looks amazing and it should perform very well for anything you need to burn or get down that's weak to fire. Moving along, we're going to go now into the Bone Tree. So this is the other kind of base look for the heavy bowguns that I'll show you. And this is the Bone Tree. This one was done a little bit better, but they kind of did a patchwork of one over the other. And this one, I think it's more the Bone Weapon. Actually, I just realized that. All the Mineral Weapons, or the Ore Weapons, seem to use the Wyvern Heart. But I think more of the Bone Weapons will be using the Wyvern Snipe. And it's basically turning your, your Heavy Bowgun into a Sniper Rifle instead of a Cannon. So you fire one shot out, you see a bit of damage there and then it kind of blows up along the way, so it almost is like a piercing explosive shot. So we'll just put that back away, and I'll show you the stats. As you can see, it's just a very simple kind of heavy bowgun design. It has a little bit of the longer barrel to it, the shield, nothing special. So this is the Power Shooter 2. It starts with 270, a level 3 slot to begin with, so that'll give you some nice options. It does have defense bonus plus 10, but I don't know if you'll notice it that much. Three augmentation slots to get it to be a little more customizable if you'd like it to be. And here, ooh, actually, it's a good thing this is just a base because it doesn't have a lot of variety, really. Normal, it has one, two, and three, but it really slims down for everything else. Piercing, only one. Spreads, one and two. But sticky, cluster, everything else. This might actually be a good status-heavy bowgun because you can have your poison paralysis and sleep, and they're all decent capacities at three and four. As for the special ammos, nothing elemental. It can use slicing and wyvern, but overall I don't think I'd probably recommend using it. It just doesn't have a lot of access to some of the heavier shot types you'd want to use. Moving right along though, we'll go into the Diablos. Another unique look for the heavy bow guns and one that's been carried over through many generations. So this is the end of the Diablos line, but it's basically the Black Diablos for looks as you can tell. When you wield it, you're basically wielding a little mini Diablos in a way. You have the Diablos tail for a stalk, which is absolutely lovely. A little bit of the horns pointing forward is a crest. The shield actually looking a lot like the little Diablos' sort of side plates that come off the head. And a nice line of the plating just along the top of the frame there. And this is another Wyvern heart, or Wyvern snipe, sorry. You just load her up, take aim, let her rip. And as you can see, it goes in and deals quite a bit there. So if we go into equipment info, this is probably one of the highest, if not the highest raw damage heavy bowgun you can come across at 330. Again, minus 20% affinity is a trade-off, but if you can get that up to positive, you're going to really do a lot of damage with it. It has a 15 defense bonus, so that will help you a bit more, but it does come with a high deviation. So you'll notice your shots going left and right. So this one might be easier to show you guys. So let's say I'm aiming at that there. Actually, no, I need something that has some capacity. Here we go. So we'll say we're aiming for that little spot right there. Actually, maybe it's the recoil that's changed. 
because I thought originally the deviation would send the shots left and right, but it looks like it's more that it causes our recoil to deviate from where we're aiming. Yeah, that's it exactly. Okay, so that's how they change deviation to work. Moving along, though, so you can see that'll send you a little bit of deviation. Oh, my bad. And here we go. So, it does have a decent amount of loadout for normal wand and piercing. So, if you can get yourself up with a good amount of getting that affinity cured, you'll probably be doing a lot of piercing damage and normal damage with it. No spread, surprisingly. And it does kind of taper off in what other ammos you have access to. But, you could use a bit of poison paralysis to help you out on some of your hunts. It does have a once capacity for exhaust, but I don't think you'll really get enough out of it considering it's just one piece or one shot per load. Moving along from the Griffin Blazooka, we go to the Detura Blaster 3. And this is Puke Puke's heavy bow gun. And as you can see, it kind of takes some of its cues from the ore tree, where it's just a few little things slapped on to kind of say it is. There's a little bit of binding around the back here with a few colors, a little bit of a feather. Thing there around the frame for you. The bow limbs just have little attachments on the front to kind of give that puke feel, and then just the feathers on the shield there. And this is another wyvern snipe, so it might very well be that all of the bone tree weapons use wyvern snipe, and all of the mineral tree, sorry, use the wyvern heart. We'll just go into equipment info for it. So 255 attack, about your base of the line for all of your end line heavy bow guns. It does come with a level 2 and a level 1 decoration slot, so you have a little bit of help there. Low deviation with 3 augmentation slots. As for your loadout, you do have a nicer variety on this one. Yeah, you get normal 1, 2, and 3, although lower capacities. You also get pierce 1 and 2 with a 10 and 8, which is very high. You get a small amount of spreads you can use, 3, 2, and 1. And you also have Sticky Cluster and an access to Poison 1 and 2, and even a 5 capacity for Flaming. So this isn't too bad of a heavy bowgun to get you started into towards more of the high rank later game for base Monster Hunter World. The look, again, you kind of wish there was something a little more unique, because of, well, Pookie's tail would have been something nice to see incorporated into the stock a bit more. But that's just how it seemed the weapons went, is certain monsters got unique looks in certain weapons, or in others they just got a random kind of slapped on base. Next, though, we'll go on to Radobons here with the Bon Roar 3. On this one, it's a much better disguised base. But then, Radobon sort of is that in a way. So, if we take a look at the side, you can see it's just basically that bone base completely covered in tar and bone fragments. And I think that actually works very well for Radobon's look. I don't think you need anything too unique for him, given just the way he is as a monster. And this helps you really disguise that bone base quite a bit underneath it. You got the nice shield with a few plates and tars on it. And it is a wyvern snipe like the others. So this one actually starts you with 270, which isn't too bad at all. It has one of the higher defense bonuses of plus 20. Average deviation, so you will be fighting that a little bit. As for loadout, it's a little limited in the amounts, or like the quantities you can load, but it has a nice variety. Normals 1 to 3, pierces 1 to 3, clusters 1 and 2, and actually has a nice addition of being able to use paralysis to sleep of 1 and 2. For its capacity, you do have flaming and water for shot capacity for it, so it can do a little bit of elemental damage as well. So Radobons isn't too bad of a heavy bowgun to go after if you want a nice little bit of a mixed set, for so or a mixed weapon that can handle a few different monsters because of their weaknesses. Moving along though, we'll go to the Gama Cannon 2. And this is Dodo Gama's heavy bowgun. And unfortunately, it's not as unique as you wish Dodo stuff would be. It's kind of hard to even tell it is Dodo Gamas in a lot of ways, really. Like, instead of using the chin plating sort of along the barrel as if it's Dodo shooting out your ammo types, it just kind of covers the stock here in a weird shell shape. You do have a little bit of Dodo hide along the frame there. And you can kind of see Dodo a bit more through the almost heart-shaped shielding on it, but again, it's hard to really discern this is Dodo just from the looks of it. But if we go into equipment info for the Gamma Cannon 2, it is a 255, so a little lower in the damage capability there. Average deviation, Wyvern Snipe. Two augmentation slots with a level 1 decoration slot. And it is a little bit different, because here you can see it does have normal 1, 2, and 3, pierce 1 and 2, spread 1 and 2, 
But just like Dodo, our big, our big blasty boy, he gives you a big blasty gun. You get stickies of 1, 2, and 3, and clusters of 2 and 3 to use. Does have sleep level 1, so you could do a little bit of sleep bombing. And it actually does surprisingly have a thunder capacity. Because that, I think, is the element Dodogama is actually weakest to. So you could use this for on a few hunts going after something that's weak to thunder. Overall, though, it's not a bad weapon. It's just for somebody as iconic as Dodogama is, you wish he kind of got a few more unique weapons that showed off a bit more of his big chin and just other features. We'll carry right along onto some of the next weapons. And we have the Kodachi Lion 3. And this is Toby Kodachi's, where you can see that the stock was done... I kind of like the how the stock was done, because it does hide more of the bone feature a little bit, because of how you have the tail feathers almost covering it. Nice Toby hide along the back end of the frame. Where it does fold up, though, for the stock to basically the main frame, you can see that it goes right back to that basic bone. And just the Toby kind of quills off for the bow limbs. The shield is very nicely done, I'll have to admit that to it, is that the shield, because it's so covered entirely by the hide, it looks as a nice addition to the heavy bowgun. Another wyvern snipe, so it does seem the pattern is continuing, that all of the bowden weapons are wyvern snipes. Starts with 255 for you with a level 1 slot. No deviations, so this one will let you keep firing steady what you're aiming for pretty well. It does have 15% affinity, so that's a nice extra bit of damage for you. Loadout, it's a good Pearson heavy bowgun. Really good, actually. Normal 1 and 2 has some pretty high capacities. Pierce has some very, very high capacities, though. Level 1 at 9, level 2 at 7, and level 3 at 5. You'll be able to fire Pierce quite a lot before having to reload. Spread, you get a level 1 with 9. That's even a very nice capacity there. It's a little unusual that it goes right into Sticky and Clusters level 2, so you do have some explosive power there. And just like Toby, you get a little bit of extra paralysis boost, so you can do level 1 at 4 shots and level 2 at 3 shots before reloading. Capacity, very high thunder capacity at 7. Just like Toby, you're going to be using thunder and paralysis quite a bit with this bowgun. It does have dragon shot capabilities, but honestly, dragon is one of those shots that's hard to argue if it's worth it. It can put out a lot of damage per shot, but you kind of feel so limited in how much you can use and how even the shot works. Like, I don't think I actually have any dragon shot with me at the moment. Oh, I can use. So I'll show you guys the dragon shot. It's this very slow mortar-esque thing. And though you do get a lot of damage right breaking up there. Oh, I actually guess I kind of got to get closer. I'm not sure how much one would do. It seems like it does maybe 4 or 5 at 13. So at least 50 or so damage. But some other shots do that in just one or two shots. Like, let me see how much the level 2 shot will do. Yeah, that already does 30 on its own. So you can see it's not exactly that high of a gain, comparative speaking. Anyway, it also does have a nice slicing capacity. So if you do want to try going for some tails, this is a good bow gun to think of. The slicing shots have thankfully been buffed in world. So unlike the previous generations, it's much easier to get tails off as a gunner. Which I have to admit is a godsend. I hated it in the old generation games where if you're a solo hunter and you focused on main and gunning, you had a hell of a time trying to get tails because you had to capture or do your damnedest to get the tails off. But moving along from that little ranting, we'll go now into the Kirin's heavy bow gun. And this is thankfully one of the looks that got carried on through the generations. This is the Quick Silver or Quick Quiver? The Quick Quiver. Now, this is Kirin's heavy bow gun. This look is actually something more in line to the older style monster hunter for the heavy bow guns. You can kind of see the bow is at the back of the weapon for a change. The nice fluffy shield off to the right side of it. The fluffy part for the barrel, so that's the Kirin high, or the Kirin main. You can see the hide lying the entire length of the weapon. And the quick quiver is a good thunder one. It has attack 255, a level 1 decoration slot, low deviation, one augmentation slot because of its rarity. But as you can see, piercing and thunder and freeze are its highest capabilities. Normal 1 and 2, you get a few shots there to keep you going. Pierce 6, 5, 3 for levels 1, 2, and 3 respectively. Sticky level 1, you get the 4 shots with it, so that's not too bad. It does give you paralysis, and surprisingly, you have higher capacity of paralysis level 2 than you do with level 1. It even has a very high exhaust capacity at level 2 of 6, so this might be a good one if you're trying to knock out the monster to use your sticky level 1s and your exhaust shots to try to help that along, or just tire it out. 
It does have, as we said, the high capacities for Freeze and Thunder at 7 shots each. So if you're going after something that's weak to Thunder or Freezing, think about taking along the Quick Quiver. It might not have the highest damage, but it does have some of the higher ammo capacities to really help you out on those hunts. And we'll fold that up, because next is a bow gun that I've already showed you guys. Oh, maybe not quite yet. It might be one of the next ones after this. So we're going to Zor Magdoros's. And as you can see, it kind of has that same problem again with that simple base, and... You could kind of tell it is Zor Magdoros's because of the way all of his gear is these plates with these little almost glowing lava points underneath. The shield is... Pretty nice, I do like that it's a change from how some of the other ones were for shaping, like Toby's look, no I don't think Toby's looked like heart, I think it was, ah what one was that looked kind of like a heart, I can't even remember now, I don't think, it wasn't Dodo's I don't think, might have been Zitsiyaku's that was like that, but as you can see a bit of a different shape for the shields helps break that up, but again once you get past that you can see everything else is just that simple bone design that you kind of wish there was just some more uniqueness to it. Overall though we'll take a look at the Mag the Magda Gematus 2. It actually has a very high raw attack at 315, another minus 20% affinity. Seems like if your raw damage goes over 300 or is at 300 you'll get negative affinity, but that's not too hard to work and compensate for. Defense bonus of plus 20, so one of the highest defense bonuses you can get. But it does come with a high deviation, so this is basically a hand cannon you're walking around with. Although, it has a weird loadout for what shots you use, to be honest. Normal 1, 2, and 3 is pretty normal, but you only have level 3s for piercing and spreads. And then you have a few heavy hitting shots, like sticky 2 and 3 at 3 each, and cluster 2 and 3 at 1 each. And then you have a lot of all the statuses at level 2, basically, for 5, 4, 3, 6, as you can see there. And even exhaust at level 1 as well. So this is a very good one at slowing down, making the monster tired and fatigued, and letting you wail on it with some of your powerful shots. A high flaming capacity at 7 shots, and has dragons, so you do have that potential, and even the wyvern shot as well. So this is your, basically, like Zora Magros, it's a big, heavy, hidden, lumbering siege machine. I... I still wish there was a little bit more done to the sock to make kind of break up that base look of the weapon, but that's just kind of what it was. Moving along, though, here's the one I was thinking of, Teostra's Flames. Uh, if, if you watched the Teostra hunt, and I don't blame you with how long it was if you didn't, this is Teostra's unique heavy bow gun that's been carried along for generations now. And not just from generations. This was actually, I think, his look back in Freedom Unite, at least... Seven or eight years ago, I think now. Probably even more than that, maybe. Anyway, as you can see, it's basically just an ornate ruby and gold banded cannon with a wheel on the side for a shield. I do like the look of it. That's a nice, basically just a cannon you're walking around with. Attack at 270, low deviation. This is actually a wyvern heart weapon. So this will be your Rambo style, just putting out a lot of damage with it. And has a very nice variety for weapon or ammo types you can use. Normals 1, 2, and 3, pierces 1, 2, and 3, and spread level 1 at 10 shots. So high capacity in that regard there. It also is a lot of explosive firepower for you too. Sticky 1, 2, and 3, and cluster 1, 2, and 3. And actually surprisingly gives you poison 1 and 2. So if you're up against some elder dragons like Teostra and Kushala, who's the heat aura and wind aura are giving you prompts, if you poison them that should dampen the effects of that. It has a nice flame capacity of 5, with even 2 capacity for the wyvern ammo. So this is meant to be just like you see a cannon you're using to get some nice big blasts out with. We'll move right along to our next weapon, because we're slimmed down on the ones to show ya. We are into Xenojivas. And unfortunately, the big bad end boss of Monster Hunter base game did not get a really unique look. As you can see, it's basically just the ore branch again. You do have some nice little additions like the bit of Xeno scaling right on the top between the shield plates there. The shield itself is mostly covered. The barrel does have the Xeno almost like the tail for how the length goes before you flare out at the end. It is hidden a bit but could have been hidden a little better. I think maybe lowering it so that way all these tendrils actually covered the bottom of the stock would have made it look a bit nicer. Overall, though, it is another Xeno weapon, so it does have that nice sort of mystical aura to it. The Xenojiqua 
It doesn't have that much attack, though. It, even for being kind of the end of that line, it's only 255. But you'll probably want it for those two level 3 slots and decorations that let you equip some more heavy or stronger skill power decorations. It is another Wyvern Heart, so you're going to be ramboing it up against the monsters. As for capacities, it's another weird one. This is actually probably your best elemental bowgun looking at things. Normal 1 and 3, pierce 2 and 3, spread 2 and 3, so it does pack the heavier shots, so it will help you do damage output. And look at the capacities for elemental, flaming water, freeze, thunder, all up to 7. So it will give you a nice mix of elemental shots. If you have to go after multiple monsters, or monsters that have multiple weaknesses, like say a bear off, where you use water to break the mud and then fire underneath it, this is a good bowgun to pick for that. Overall, this is probably one of your more overall rounded weapons that you'll be using against anything where you need a few different elemental types. And I think there might just be one or two more. Yeah, there's mostly just one more. And that's the Dark Devourer. This is the Devil's Show Heavy Bowgun. As you can see, it was very, very well made. This is a unique look that's come down the line from when Devil's Show first got his Heavy Bowgun. I think it was back in Portable 3rd or 3 Ultimate where Devil Joe got its heavy bowgun look. As you can see, it does scream Devil Joe. That dark green coloring for the high, the bright flashes of red, and all of the fangs and spikes off it. It looks amazing. And this is another Wyvern Heart, so just like Devil Joe, you can be ruthless with going out and doing all kinds of damage. 345, your highest raw damage heavy bowgun out there, but minus 25% affinity. So basically what you want to do is kick that up and you'll be doing really good. It does have a high deviation, so you got to be careful what you're shooting with. Because you want shots that you'll be able to readjust and aim again. If you try doing too quick, you're probably going to lose a lot of damage because the shots miss. Two augmentation slots and no decoration slots. As you can see, this is all about the heaviest packed impact shots you can get. Normals 1, 2, and 3, Pierce 3, Spread 3, Stuckies 2 and 3, Cluster 2 and 3... And it does actually give you sleep and exhaust, so if you do want to do a bit of sleep bombing or tiring the monster out with possibly knocking him out, go for it. It doesn't have any elemental shots aside from the dragon. It does have some slicing, so you could work at trying to get the tails off. And it does have wyvern, as you'd expect from Devil Joe being the heaviest hitter there is. I will show you one more heavy bow gun, and that is just the... Sort of Lunaster take on the Xenojiva, and this is probably the one out of the three you'd want to go for because of the built-in skill. As you can see, even changing up the coloring of the ore base really helps change just the entire look of a weapon sometimes. Like the bright gold and teal and navy blue mixed with Xenojiva is very nice. So this is the Empress Cannon Sticks. You can see it has the built-in skill of the Razor Sharp or Spare Shots, so that'll help keep your ammo going a while. 285 attack with 10% affinity. Does have a level 3 slot with a level 1, so you do have a few decorations you can play around with, and one augmentation slot. This is a Wyvern Snipe style heavy bowgun too. As you can see, nice variety of ammo types you can use. Normals 1, 2, 3, pierces 1, 2, 3, all with at least 5 shock capacity. So those will keep you going for quite a bit. Spread 1 at 9, sticky 1 at 4, which is pretty high considering you're Maximum allowed to stick you any time is 9 shots for what you carry in inventory. And it does give you a cluster of 1, 2, 3 for 3, 2, 1. Nice little back and forth there. Does let you do some sleep bombing too with the 4 and 3 and has exhaust capability so you can tire and fatigue a monster. Capacity wise for elemental shots, water and thunder. So this is a good one, say, even if you're going up against Teostra to use. Or I think even Kushala de Orcs. because I think Kushala is weakest to thunder. And it does have dragons, so you can get a few hits with that. Very high slicing capacity, surprisingly, at 4, so you can help get the tails off if you're hunting with other people in a group. Overall, that, I think, covers most of the heavy bowguns. There's only one that I didn't show you guys, and I'll just quickly run us over to the smithy to show you that one. That's just the dragon bone heavy bowgun. And it's basically... You don't really want the end of the line for it. You more just use the base to branch off into the other weapons for it. Because the end of the line for the Dragonbone Bowgun is just very, very lackluster compared to every single thing else. But we'll just quickly run up there so I can show you that uh, that one. And I'll show you the other two of the uh, the Lunastra tree as well. They're basically some, just again, those metal-based looks with a little bit added on around it. 
So I've just got to give it a moment here to load itself up. There we go, and we're right by the smithy, which is perfect. So we'll, to, we'll talk to our good friend here. Oi, oi. And we'll do upgrade equipment and go all the way back through these two Empress Cannon Sticks. So this is the Lunastra Nergigante look. Let me just hit preview and swap her over. So as you can see, it's Nergigante. This one, you can actually probably tell it's Nergigante is more than the Destruction Fusillade. Because you can see all the spikes sticking out of it and that. But again, it's that little base mixed in there. And this is just the kind of Lunastra metal base all the way through. It does actually have a very nice ornate look with the gold and the sapphire navy blue mix in there. Very ornate, nice looking bow gun. And the last one I'll show you. I won't go through the stats on those just because if you'd like to look for them yourself, go right ahead. This is the Dragon Bone Can. You can see it's just kind of like that tarnished bone look. And if we look at the stats, 255, so kind of base with the others, no affinity, a level 1 slot, low deviation, wyvern snipe, tree augmentation slots. Unfortunately, the ammos, you can see how badly it suffers. Only has normal 1, piercing 1, and spread 1. None of the explosive or recovery shots. It does give you a few status shots, which you'll probably desperately need, to be honest. A poison, paralysis, sleep, exhaust. The only elemental capacity it has is the dragon, has a wyvern, so this is basically, you don't make it for this, you make it so that way you can get access to these two down here. But that basically covers all the heavy bow guns, and with that, that also brings all the weapon showcases I'll do from Monster Hunter World to an end. But next week, if everything goes smoothly, I'm going to have something a little special. I will give you a little teaser for sticking along this far, is we're going to basically sit down and try to design a better bow gun. It's going to become Monster Hunter War, or well, no, Monster Hunter Mondays building a better bow gun. And we're going to start with redoing and redesigning the Tigrex like bow gun, changing it from the Tigrex tank to something that is a little more Tigrex feel, or Tigrex feeling, however you pronounce that. Again, Monster Hunter, the names can be pronounced in a lot of ways. But thank you guys very much for joining me on the showcase. It was a pleasure to have you. If you do like any of the Bowgun looks in particular, or have a different opinion, be sure to leave them in the comments. I always love listening out for feedback from any of my videos and any of you guys who's stuck the time to view them. So until I see you in the next video, please remember as always, survivors and hunters alike, take care and stay alive!